Hi, I'm super excited to introduce a brand new product and this is something that I've been eager to tell you about but I couldn't for the last two years. Um, so Craig, you know, Gion has been known as a coating company but also we have a broad range of maintenance products and today finally I can show you uh, a brand new thing. Excellent. So I will grab it and here we go. This is the first very okay. exclusive. It's a wax. Gion wax. Excellent. So, as you know, we had uh, our product, which was called Booster, yeah, okay. which is a fluorine-based uh, top coat. Uh, although very, very durable, we are taking it out of the range because okay. of expensive raw material. Sure. We wanted to do better in terms of ease of application. So this is a fluorine-based wax mm -hmm. with all the benefits um, where Gion is um, like known about ease of application. And it comes in this very unique Cool. Let's have a look. Package. Have a look. First of all, it smells great. It smells absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Twisty. Twisty. It's a stick. And um, this is you, you, you grabbed it already. So this is uh, our idea of applicator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not having a round one. It seems and natural anyway. I mean, instantly you yep. just know what you want to do with it straight away. And uh, you don't have like uh, the form, you don't have like cramped hands when you when you hold a, a rounded yeah, so applicator for the whole going car. Going around the whole car. Yeah. Yeah, it can be quite uh, strenuous. The goal of the wax, and this is why it took so long uh, to develop it, is that we wanted to have the durability of a fluorine based wax, but with the ease of application. Okay. So this means you put it on the car, um, you leave it for a minimum of 30 minutes, but if you want, you can leave it overnight and it will come off like a breeze. Okay. So target group is people who have coating on their car yeah, 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 yeah. to top it or enthusiasts. Because okay. waxing is not dead. No, it's not. And actually nothing can go wrong with no, this no, one. No. It will not stain your plastics. It will not leave residue behind That's right. handles and everything. So it comes off really like a... And it can be applied more accurately. Up was one of the goals to apply... A straight edge. Yeah. Um, on top of that, in the packaging, we will have um, also, the, like in the cam coat, we will have the one bolt wipe towel. Yeah. Uh, of course, you can use polished wipe, bolt wipe, whatever uh, your preference is. Um, another thing is durability. We want to go for maximum durability when you're not using harsh chemicals. For sure, it will last like a couple of months. Okay. 100% sure. It's a great topper when you do, for example, coating and you have to send the car out and not mm -hmm. the best circumstances, yeah, UK yeah. weather, give it a layer of uh, wax on yeah, top yeah. and good to go. And, the, and, and, and the, the, the owner of the vehicle can do it himself at home if he wants to in his garage. Absolutely. And classic cars wise, it's also something that will has its place in the classic car world yeah, because yeah, yeah. sometimes you don't want to be very destructive on, on, on the original soft classic car paints. If you want to reapply... Something better than a wax. It's more durable than a wax. Yep. And it's easier to apply than a wax. I'm super excited it about is this great. product. That and uh, it, it, I think everybody will like it. And um, let's wax the car. So we have washed the whole car, decontaminated and prepped it, and it's now ready for our wax. Super easy in our new DO kind of jar. Open it, take our foam applicator, very quick application on the foam and we can use it in circular or straight motions. You can even use it on the plastics, it will not stain. Goes on really smooth. And this we will do on the whole car, let it sit for 30 minutes and we're ready for a wipe off. We are now 30 minutes later and it's time to wipe off our wax. I took a brand new soft wipe and let's see how uh, the wax goes off. Fold your tower properly. No pressure at all needed. Here we go. Super smooth, no pressure at all.
logos, plastics. So as you see, we are now left with a super glossy, slick and hydrophobic finish. Hi guys, we want to introduce you today to our new Geon APC. So, an APC is a powerful cleaner for all exterior surfaces and interior surfaces. Rich, why did Geon need an APC? That's a really good question, but, and I guess it's a question a lot of our customers and fans will ask as well. Given that we already have an excellent lineup of cleaners for virtually every surface on the car, why would we need to do an all-purpose cleaner? Um, for me, I guess the simple answer to that is that many of our professional certified detailers come to us on a regular basis and say, I wish I had a single product in a single bottle that I could use for cleaning and that I could vary the strength. Because sometimes I may want to use, say, a plastic cleaner, I could use vinyl cleaner, but I just can't get the strength that I want for a particular job. In other cases, I might want a weaker solution. So for me, that's kind of our experience in the UK. I don't know how that maybe translates into the Belgium market for you. Yep, same thing. Uh, over at our place, we get a lot of questions uh, for specific use cases where a ready-to-use product just doesn't cut it. So that's why we have this one and it's dilutable. So yeah. how would you use it? What dilution ratios and for what applications? I guess for me, kind of like, I think for one of the key uses would be engine bay cleaning where we haven't really had a dedicated product before that we could use for that. So in those situations, we're gonna go with a one to five dilutions. We're gonna go one part product to five parts water. Um, and then we can back that dilution strength off. So if we wanna then go maybe to say door shuts that aren't too bad, maybe the arches that aren't too bad, we maybe back it off and, and go a little weaker. And then when we get to the interior side of things, if we just want a single product, we can use on everything safely. We can back it off to one to 15. Um, so for me, yeah, engine, interior, arches, shuts, it just sometimes, as a professional, would definitely save time and money being able to vary the strength of my solution for the task in hand, but all from the single bottle. There you go, APC. Rich will show you how it works. So let's talk about our new APC. As its name suggests, this is our new concentrated all-purpose cleaner, safe for use on all interior and exterior surfaces. It's designed to be very powerful and to remove dirt very easily. It is a concentrated product, so you need to dilute it before use. We recommend one to five for exterior use, through to one to 15 for interior use, and you can make up dilutions along the way to suit the task in hand. So let's take a look at how we work with it. So we've made up a concentration of one to 10 for this particular car, the door card of this Focus. And we're gonna start now by cleaning this section and then the lower door card. So we're gonna take a brush, we're gonna spray the product onto the brush, not to the car itself. And then we apply and we just gently start agitating it, working it in onto all the nooks and crannies to pull out the dust and all the dirt that's embedded in there. So we continue working the product in, making sure we get into all the nooks and crannies. And the minute that we've finished our agitation and we're happy, we now need to remove the product. We must not let it dry on any surfaces. We just take a towel, we take off the bulk of it first, in the big sections, and then we can start working in the smaller sections with a corner of town here. I'm going to 
into very small sections. We can take the corner of the towel and just work them in. Like this. If you are left with any small foamy bits, you can just take your brush, give it a wipe, and then just gently pull out the worst of the foam, like there, there. Yeah. And now we can just leave the rest to dry naturally. So once we've done the smaller sections of detail with a, a soft, smaller brush, we then want to work our way up to the larger sections of more textured plastics. And for that, we're going to use our leaf shaped soft haired brush. Uh, similar process. So all we're going to do is spray the product into the brush, not directly onto the panel. And then we simply apply and then agitate in the same way as before. This time we're using a little bit more pressure, working it in so that we get into the grain of the plastic and actually pull all the dirt out, ready for wiping off. So once we've applied it, we're now ready to remove. So we'll take our suitable microfiber towel, again a board wipe, and now we need to just wipe off. One pass first to take the bulk of the product off and the dirt, and then flip the towel over to the dry side, take off the final product residue, and leave a perfect smear free, just like that. So for exterior use, we want to use a slightly higher concentration because we've got more dirt to shift. So this time we're going to use a one to five. That's one part product to five parts water in a mixing bottle. Here we go. For normal trims, we just spray on liberally and we take a nice soft brush and we just stipple the brush to agitate the dirt from the trim and lift it. For more dirty areas in here, we want to be liberal with the product. Spray plenty in, and also on the inside of the cover. And again, we just use the same brush, stipple. So now we're going to move on to the shut and again we're just going to spray liberally into the area that we want to clean and then use the brush and really agitate and lift all of the dirt out from where it's collected over time. And then finally for the lower areas of the car we can actually just spray liberally making sure we Soak the product into the seams. And we can leave that to sit for a minute while we start the rinse process on the rest of the car. Here we go again, another one that I will introduce you, another brand new product, and I will do quick, quick view, quick view, Excellent. exactly, so quick application um, for view, uh, word says itself, but uh, for those who, have, who don't have the time to apply or to prepare the window like it should be done mm -hmm. for maximum durability with view, this one is super easy, bulletproof, 
Windows should be cleaned with a glass cleaner for a minimum clay if necessary. And we have Vilt, squeezing product. Circular. Circular motions. Uh, front, sides, uh, back, for example, is like 10 minutes and give it a damp cloth and straight off. Easy wipe off. Sounds brilliant. Quick view is actually something that will be uh, very often used for uh, those who, have, who leave the stick into the car and after some drop in performance of the view, apply on top. Straight on top. Straight on top, ready to go. Off it goes. Let's give it a go. Give it a go. For the application of quick view, first thing first, let's make sure the glass is clean. For that, take Gion glass, few spray and clean the glass. To show you the dramatic difference between a coated and non-coated glass, let's tape it off. Let's apply quick view. Let's go through the steps. Make sure, first thing first, that the felt applicator is well lubricated. Apply it on the glass, few press, and apply it in circular motion. Once you've done the whole glass, let it sit for 5 to 10 minutes and then wipe it off with a damp cloth. Now that the product has cured for over 5 minutes, let's take our board wipe, make it damp and let's remove the residue. That's it. Now let's see the difference. We're gonna tell you how to clean your car in 25 steps. Huh? In the APC. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be serious here. Now I like that. He's bringing yeah. his. He's bringing the vibe though. Yeah, the vibe. Let's talk about our completely new redesigned coating package, and Rich will tell you all about it. Thanks, Eve. So at Gion, we're constantly evolving, constantly moving forward and constantly listening to customer feedback. And some of the feedback we've received recently about our existing coating packages is that some customers who use our coatings on a regular basis don't always need all of the materials that are included. So they don't need the cure, they don't need the pipette and maybe they already have a big stash of the applicators uh, and the suede. What they're saying to us is we want a lightweight package that's less expensive and better to meet our needs. And that's exactly what we've done. So we now have the light box concept for all of our coatings. So here we have the light box and inside for the enthusiast and professional range we simply have the coating itself and the instruction manual, nothing else. For our certified detailer range, same concept, we have the products, we have the instruction manual and in this instance we also have the infinite warranty pack as well. So all the packaging is for every Gion coating from one pure, most synchro, matte, Duraflex and most plus. Yep. Right so the, the complete through. range except for Camco because this is already in a very compact bottle. Exactly. And some of the customers may say, okay, well, I maybe don't need some of the other old materials, but maybe just I need one applicator. I want an applicator option with this. So in these boxes, there, there will be no applicators. No applicators in here. Because they can, they can be bought separately, but we will introduce this one, which is actually a brand new applicator. It's a foam applicator with a liner and it's double sided. So mm -hmm. it has the suede side and it has a bald wipe side. Mm -hmm. So it will allow a faster and easier application of the coating. And these can be bought in a two pack and in a 10 pack. Cool. So that's a brand new one. That's really nice. And I presume one of the key benefits is this is going to be easier to level coatings as well. Absolutely. That's the goal. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. Thanks, Eve. So there you go. You heard it first from us. 
we now have lightweight packaging, more environmentally friendly, less expensive and perfect for you. See you soon. Ciao. Alright, rolling. Just rolling. Okay, just stop. Roll for bay. So time to introduce our brand. Uh, sorry. Again? Yeah, I can continue? Yep. Okay. At Geon, we have a saying, if you stop innovating, you're going backwards. So that's why we have an ever-evolving visual language. But this year, we really took it to the new level. This is a new packaging. Rich, talk me through it. Okay, cool, yeah, so new product labels for us this year. If we look at the old product labels, um, we realized over time there was a few things we could improve. I mean, for example, we had the, the series detail here within the product name. So sometimes that could cause a little confusion. And then on the back of the bottle, whilst we incorporated our nice crystal design, we didn't really have anything that immediately told the customer what does this product do and what the benefit is for them. So what we did on the new labeling is immediately wow. on the front, you can see we move the series indicator up here above the product name so it doesn't interfere with it. We make it larger, bolder, yeah. but we remove the fill. So the key thing here is it tells you what it is, but it doesn't distract then from the actual product name have the clear bold product name over the crystal and then if there is a characteristic product we want to draw attention to we do that below in a nice complementary color and on the rear of the label here instead of the crystal we immediately have a statement here that draws the key benefit to the eye of the user so nice quick clear reference for the user to do you can see that here on this product so a quick pickup immediately tells us Q2M series maintenance series yeah. this is the ceramic detailer and the benefit is here we have gloss and repels water really brilliantly. Cool. So very quick, clear, easy labeling. So what do you think of that? Oh, really clear way to show people what the product is and uh, what it's used for. Mm -hmm. oh, fantastic. Cool. These are currently at the moment uh, now in production and depending on the stock that individual distributors have will vary the times to market in different places, but we expect them to start hitting markets over the next few months and into early Perfect. next year. Can't wait to get them in. Yeah, be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else that's new? Yeah, lots more new stuff. You want to go over to the boards? We'll take a look. Uh, perfect, thank cool. you. Okay, so there's a lot of different things to take in here. So I'll talk you through it bit by bit. So I want to start here with the text on this one. So in the past, historically, with Gion and our text, we always used a compressed font, but it didn't allow us to emphasize anything in particular. So what we've done now is we've got new fonts this year, and now we actually have a play with them. Sometimes we still use compressed font, but sometimes mm -hmm. we expand, and this gives us the option then to highlight certain statements and elements within text pieces to draw attention to key benefits mm -hmm. and other messages. What we can also do as well is we can incorporate text in the background, similar to the labels, but here we remove the fill, keep it large and sometimes then repeat the actual message of the product. So maybe on the first look of this image, you see this, you read that and you see the beautiful yeah. visual, but then on a second and a third look, the subliminal message is there about what this product exactly. is and what the benefit is to you. Then we can also have a play as well on the words with the way that we want to express messages and the sizing of the font, etc. So here we want to draw a message about quick detailer and here mm -hmm. I bathe my car and I really like this one here, my entire world. So these are new, but I'm guessing these are not here for no reason. Yeah, these elements here, yeah? Yeah, okay, so this is another key part of the visual language of Gion. So, it's very, in the past we've used generic elements, you know, we have splashes, we have colour pots, we have smokes, etc. They look very pretty and they're, they're, they're brilliant, but at the same time they're not necessarily unique to Gion. So, this was a year-long project by Gion designers to think about how can we now improve our visual language to make it absolutely unique to Gion and to capture the essence of Gion within the visual language. So if we think about Gion and we break it down, we're a chemical company. You know, we've got a ton of chemical expertise. Mm -hmm. Our business is chemicals and putting together chemistry in wonderful ways that creates the fantastic products. So the concept here is to create a series and a system of molecular elements um, designed from the ground up over the course of a year so that we have a series of visual elements that we combine in different pieces uh, for different purposes, complementing the look of the products and giving you a feel that you're immersed in the actual chemistry That's of the amazing. products at all times. Um, you'll notice as well that we can also play with the way that the, the imagery is presented. So here we have a depth perspective, you know, it's, it's a nice kind of image, it almost looks like a kind of clever photograph and we have that sense of depth. But in another instance, we, 
where we don't want that impression. We want, might want to have like an abstract. Um, and so this is a, a classic one for me. This is awesome. And, and what does this instantly remind you of? Looks like a tire sidewall. Yeah, exactly. But if you look at it again, is it a tire sidewall? No, it isn't. It's not, it but it gives cool. that. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really cool, but it, it gives a feel. So again, this is a unique textural design that we've uh, actually created. It gives you the feel of what you're looking at, but without using a, an image or a stock photograph or anything that's yeah. easily uh, replicated by anyone else on the market. Unique to Gion, a, a definite feel for us. And again, we can use other abstracts. We can use geometrics to, to play on the colors of product and bring everything together in a nice visual. Um, ah, I noticed this, this is PPF. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so again, it, it's a beautiful play on everything that brings together the whole visual language. We have a beautiful drape indicative of the PPF itself. Then we bring in here the molecular elements indicative of the actual coating for PPF, all in a very, very sophisticated, beautiful looking visual that can be used at all different scales and for all different purposes. Here's a little kind of miniaturized version here for Bathe Plus. And you can just imagine here that all we need to do is drop on a really nice tagline at the top, yeah. a logo, a key message, and bam, we have a beautiful magazine advert. And that's actually exactly what we're doing in the UK at the moment. We've got these adverts running in Auto Express with this new visual, and the feedback has just been tremendous oh, from the nice. start. So it's great. And of course, none of this would be meaningful in the modern world unless we were actually able to bring it to people in an electronic online okay. fashion. So the new website. That's why we have the iPad yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. That's why the iPad's here. So when we have a look at the new website, um, a similar splash screen at the start, but immediately then we see we go into the play with the text in terms of minimizing text sizes, extension and compression where necessary to draw out the key messages. And then we can start to highlight the different sections on the site. So again, back to the product labels, we have a clear indication of the series, the series name, a little bit of descriptive text, and then the beautiful product visuals. But you can see all the time here that we've actually got molecules floating over the actual top of the screen and so this is again giving the feeling that you're immersed in the geon way you know the understanding the expertise in the chemistry all the yeah. time underpinning the brilliance of the products in the range um, and again yeah it's just a super nice easy way to navigate the site it just brings this whole language together in a beautiful electronic form oh, perfect so when will this be available the site is now live it's already dropped so we're good to go oh nice very nice so Go and have a look and uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Hi everyone, I'm Rich from the UK and today I'm here with Eve from Belgium and we're going to have a nice discussion about hypes in the detailing industry and how they relate to Gion. Ask me anything you want about uh, the hypes, I'm happy to answer. <laughs> have we got all day? <laughs> uh, well, that's, yeah, we have some time so it's not, it will not be cool. a problem. So. Well let's get stuck into the big one then that probably everyone expects us to, to talk about with hypes of the industry and being Gion, coatings. Where do we even begin with this? Well. What, what I like to say is some people have the, a lot of questions about do we have a ceramic coating, do we have a glass coating, do we have a nano coating, do we have, um, what, what's, what are the differences? You know? Sure, yeah, and for me that, that came out in the early days. I mean, first of all, we started out hearing the term quartz, then we hear the term ceramic, and then from Asia comes the term glass, and then the Americans picked up on ceramic all the time, and it was back and backwards yeah. and forwards, and you think, what is it? But when you look at it, fundamentally, they're all the same. All the same. All the yeah. same. It's, uh, and I, I don't have any problem with it by the fact that people change names. The only thing is it, it sometimes it's, it brings in confusion confusion for, for the end customer. Yeah. And people start changing brand or product with no reason at all. And yeah. in the end, that's not the goal of making a proper product to no. change for the change. You have to, if you change, that's, that's why our philosophy is we will not make or change any product when it's hardly improvable or yeah. it's not only about the name it's in the end it's always about the product yeah and what's in it and how and it functions exactly yeah. and so that leads me on I mean, a good topic of conversation there is 
the way that silica-based coatings, if we want to call them that as the collective mm -hmm. term, how they've evolved over the last 10 years in particular, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we, we, we start out on a certain pathway, but then we get to the point where people start to infuse them with different things, claiming new benefits. And it seems like for me, every year, you know, you can count back and you can think, ah, oh, that was the year when, for example, like I remember 2018 and titanium was the big thing, titanium oxide, and, and then we had the silica carbide mentioned, and it, it seems to me it's hard to keep up with the, the next big hype that, that's ten, coming up. The 10 age hardness, etc., yeah. etc. So, I mean, <laughs> when you talk about coatings and infusion, titanium, we can even infuse gold, or we can infuse silver in any coating. If you want a gold-infused coating, it's very easy to make, but in the end, when you infuse zero point, uh, like Contador said, zero, 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 <laughs> point, zero, yeah. in, in the product, what does it change in properties? Yeah. Can it have any functionality? Can it have know? any functionality? Yeah. Same yeah. with like titanium or carbon or whatever they say. Yeah, we use this in the, the cylinders of the engines because it's really hard. Yeah, might be, but it's not in that form that you put it on the paint. No, exactly. So what's Thick the, film versus extremely what's, thin what's film. What's the point? Yeah. Without, without having I, I fully understand it and I fully understand that people want some, some change but in the end I, 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 I like to quote I don't care if the cat is black or white as long as it catches the mouse exactly so yep. if it doesn't catch the mouse you can put anything in it it's, it's, no not, it's not helping yeah. and it's, it, it, you, will, you will let down customers because they will have expectations that will not be fulfilled. Yeah. And in the end, as a brand, the goal is to, to have happy customers. Exactly, yeah. I think it brings me back, actually, there's a quote that I really liked from Mike Phillips in America, when he said to people who were always asking him about how do I pick a coating? And, you know, rule one is go with an established brand because mm -hmm. there you can assume that they've done their research, they've put their, their R&D hours in and they're actually confident in their product and it's going to be a stable, consistent product. But the second part of his quote was, once you've done that, turn around in a circle and that's the time it takes for a new hype and a new coating to hit the market. And it's brilliant for me because I think that just sums it up perfectly. There's always the next thing out on the market and there's then the next pitch why this is so much better than the last version. But we have so much experience in the industry if that happens and a year later. Since 2015, SEMA, <laughs> I've been like, we have been as a company also, fighting is a big word, but the hype of 9H, you know, mm -hmm. people thinking mm -hmm. that it has anything to do with scratch resistancy. Um, people coming to the booth, yeah, it's your coating 9H, it's not on the box. All our coatings are 9H, but we don't want to put it on the box because for us it doesn't make any difference in yeah. the performance of what you really expect from a coating. Yeah. So. It's good that people choose this type of marketing. It's, it's for us to explain that's not mm -hmm. our philosophy. Um, and then 2015, we got 2016, 17. Every year we had the brand new game changer. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I said, okay, let's see in 2017. And the game changer of 2016 was not existent anymore. <laughs> it was the new one. Exactly. And so like, like you said before, choose reliability, choose yeah. something that works. And, and if that for you, and if you as a customer like to try out a new product, for sure, why not? But yeah. in the end, it's, it's on the long run that you have to, to see what's, what, yeah. what keeps working. Okay, so I guess the buzzword then we have to address following on from this conversation for this year, the buzzword is graphene. Um, you know, and <laughs> I got to I got take a swing on graphene. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to, you know, I, I've been looking myself and reading and, and following the various pieces of information. So from my perspective, you know, my background, I mean, obviously coming in from many years as a reseller in the market, multi-brand, and then coming in as a distributor uh, for Gion, and then still trying to keep pace with the wider market, it strikes me that we have a lot of comments out there from, from companies that are just obviously pushing their next product. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Then we have comments out there from uh, independent reviewers um, and, and some of them are truly independent, some of them are not, some of them are sponsored. And then we have comments from, from manufacturers out there as well. Uh, and for me, those are the ones that I'm, I'm placing kind of most faith in. Um, and I just wonder what your perspective is. I mean, our viewers are obviously going to be wondering, are oh, you going to do a graphene coating? And, and where do we stand with that? And what's our thoughts at the moment? For the moment, in uh, with the things that we know chemically, um, it's again, like I said, titanium and, and carbon, whatever. If we cannot, graphene is an amazing product. 
graphene on its own. It's mm. like 100 or 200 times stronger than steel. But yeah. like I said before, if you cannot make it in this form r acting on the paint, what's the point of... Yeah. If tests show out that it's not doing what in the long run as a benefit for a customer, you can put another word on it, but yeah. will it help? Will it catch the mouse? Yeah. So in the form it's possible to do now, we are not gonna yeah. put in you in graphene yeah. road and I don't have any problems with people yeah. if they think it's better or if they think fine but we as as brand checked and did our research and tests and we don't find anything that's that beneficial to uh, yeah consistency performance still remains the things to look for exactly there are yeah. far um, more important things in a coating than it's like it's like a chef you know you have chefs top chefs we can both make mayonnaise or we can both make tomato soup yep. i can pick the really good tomatoes and have the really good cream and you can not knowing or not respecting time but we both have tomato soup or we both have mayonnaise yep. but one will be better than the other mm -hmm. so i try to compare it with that it's not only about the name yeah Makes sense. I think we should also probably touch on then self-healing as well, because you know that's gone through a, for me anyway, it was a buzzword phase yeah. and, and it's not a route that many manufacturers have gone down. And again, but it's a question that I'm asked regularly as a distributor now is, you know, first of all, are we going to have a graphene coating? And secondly, are we going to have a self-healing coating? Well, this is also a rabbit hole where, um, for example, for me personally, self-healing and the coating, it's like, when you go really technical, I see people doing stuff. With, I, I did tests with our products. I'm not going to mention on paint what what has been shown on whatever social media, YouTube. Look, we heat up and blah, blah, blah. On some paints, if you just have no coating, you make a scratch and you heat it up, it will hide the scratches. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because you have a thermal Some expansion here, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's... And then you have the expectations of customers paying top dollars for self-healing coating and they expect it to be self-healing if it's even self-healing for the rest of their life. So yeah. now they can wash with um, like a, a, you know, a rough sponge and it should, it should self-heal, yeah. which is not the case. Yeah. Um, so in, in, when, when you really want something as protection, self-healing, I think the only way to go is, is PPF. Mm -hmm. And in PPF you have a plastic that is has the possibility to, to do to have self-healing properties yeah. and you have protection against stone chips people sometimes tend to say that ceramic coatings are, are stone chip uh, approved and everything which is <laughs> the case as well this is not even a hype but we have our ppf which is self-healing and has hydrophobic properties so in that case i we choose to that's the road to go yeah Okay, cool. One little thing, I think I don't want to spend too much time on this, but for me, we've seen a massive boom in the UK in, in the last few years with this is PPF itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, not such much as a hype, but definitely a trend. You know, mm -hmm. I think that many more new car owners now are realizing that this is the time where I definitely want to get something done to my car. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, I think the old days of people having an old used car and thinking I'm going to get it detailed, that seems to be passed. And we're now at the phase where people are making that decision when they purchase their new vehicle. How do I want to protect it? I think for me, it, it's still a personal choice between PPF or whether you want to actually have yeah. a car that you maintain more often yourself in a more intrinsic way. Do you mm -hmm. find that as a trend, Europe globally, with with your brand and that ambassador role? Or well, I think it it it's for sure it's it's a, a different, completely different product, but it has its place on the market mm -hmm. for different purposes. Mm -hmm. So as I said before, if you want stone chip protection, if you want a brand new car daily driven protected against stone chips, then it's the only way to go with, with PPF. Yeah. But those two products, PPF and coating, can go along very nice. For example, a lot of people tend to do in where I live to do like fronts and, and rockers, stone chip prone, and then do the rest of the car in, in ceramic coating for uh, to, to match the self-healing properties and the, the hydrophobicity properties of, of the of the PPF, mm -hmm. uh, which are both in Protect Plus and, and, and in uh, Enhance. So they have like equal self-cleaningness and, and hydrophobicity, but different purposes on different panels of the car. Yeah. For example, on older old timers, I old cellulose paint, I would never advise to put PPF on yeah. because when you pull it off, <laughs> the <laughs> risk, enough anyway. <laughs> yeah, the risk is yeah. higher. And yeah. so it, 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 they, they both go next to each other and choose wisely. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very personal as well. Some people we have tried to make this PPF 
super super clear so I, I, I don't like it I'm a, I'm a paint kind of guy I don't like um, distortion of, of paint and, yeah. and we, we, we really try to, to, to go as good as possible yep. when you add it that you don't or even improve factory orange even peel. Improve yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. we, we try to do our best that yeah. way and uh, I think it, it, it goes along very nicely. Cool. I think that's a really nice point that you've touched on there really is the, the importance I think for anybody that's interested in detailing, whether they're doing it themselves or whether they want to come and get professional services, is it's the importance of finding out what works for you and what's going to actually yeah. suit your lifestyle, your yeah, car, exactly. your budget. Um, pick an established brand. Yeah and then talk to them and find out actually how to best match their product to your needs. Exactly, it's, yeah. as, as I said, we both have two eyes, doesn't mean we have the same view. Yeah, sure, cool. Thank you for that, I thought that was really great. Um, we hope our viewers really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, and just remember, um, keep following, stay tuned for more Geon updates. types of automotive textiles for removing dirt, grime from the interior and the exterior of the car. Welcome to the Gion Show. Uh, usually uh, we are at SEMA uh, this time of the year, but uh, we're not making it considering the circumstances uh, we find ourselves in. So today we're going to have a tech talk, uh, uh, sorry, an expert talk. Uh, and we brought in one of the guys that's been with us at SEMA from the very first day and also our Australian distributor, Mike. Mike's across the world, so he couldn't make it here today. So this is why we have him on Zoom. Mike, nice to meet you again. It's been a long time since last year, I guess, since we met each other at SEMA, as I said. I hope you're doing well. It has. Um, it's been quite a, quite a crazy 12 months, I bet. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Mike from Kaka Products over in uh, in Sydney, Australia, and Dario with me as well. Hi, Dario. He's a sales manager for, for Gion over here. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's no way of us making it. We've uh, we've been locked inside Australia, so um, we're we're counting on you guys to put a good show sort of together over there in Europe. Have you ever visited the GAC here? Uh, have you been here the last couple of years where we were building it and? It being finished uh, late I, last I, year. I saw it pre GEC, okay. so I have yet to see the uh, the full sort of um, the, the finish on it. But yeah, yeah I mean, to, this year was supposed to be the year with the with the conference, but that obviously didn't happen either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is exactly what we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about the current situation and how uh, uh, businesses, as Geom, myself, and uh, Mike, are dealing with that, and how we can actually make the most of. Uh, situation that we never, uh, nobody wanted us to be in. So um, first of all, Dario, I haven't met you at SEMA, so tell me more about yourself and uh, yeah, yeah. I want to get to know you. <laughs> We've not, well, this is the first time we have officially met, uh, eat meet, I guess. A um, bit of background in automotive and I've been um, with Mike and the CCP team for um, about almost eight months now, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really interesting time to obviously start a new role because yeah. as soon as I started I can imagine COVID kind of kicked off and um, we've um, yeah, it's been interesting but a, but a really enjoyable uh, experience so far and yeah really um, the, the brand's fantastic and what we're trying to do here in Australia so I'm really enjoying the uh, the, uh, the challenge that is uh, managing the brand here in Australia. So your normal job and under normal circumstances would be to travel around as well, uh, all over the country, or not? Yeah. yeah, I think Mike probably wishes I wasn't in the office as much. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, um, you know, we uh, obviously have a network of, of, of partnering businesses across the country, um, probably similar to yourself. And um, the sort of one of my main objectives is, is to be out of market as much as possible. Um, Obviously, uh, hasn't been so far this year, but um, we're still keeping some really good contact with our guys and, and talking with the regular. And yeah, we were in a, a or oh, we, we still are in quite a strange situation. So, when Australia first went into sort of lockdown, um, we we the country went into sort of lockdown, and then as different states sort of emerged, they relaxed the the rules in different sort of states. So, at the moment, we're quite a divided country. 
So as a citizen of Australia, I can only go to about three different states or territories at the moment still. So we, Sydney has cut off the Victorians, the Queenslanders have cut off us, and WA have cut off everyone. So at the moment, we still even can't travel with inside our country. So it's, it's pretty inhibiting. Jesus. So yeah, yeah, certainly with Australia being that big, in, in Belgium, at my place, I can get in a car and get to anywhere in the country within two, two and a half hours. So I can only imagine for you guys, you, you basically need to get on a plane or you're not getting anywhere. And traveling on a plane is even more difficult than traveling, let alone being the, the restrictions. Um, you have any idea how long this is going to last? Uh, how is it at the moment? Is it getting better? Because you guys are heading into summer now. It, it is, and the numbers are, are very, very good indeed. You know, we, we have been only very lightly touched in comparison to some of the world. It's just, I think there's just too much politics between the state governments at the moment. Um, there's a couple of elections coming up, so I would hope by, by sort of November we, we can get things sorted. They will open the borders. We can travel fairly freely, and we can get on with things such as, you know, training seminars and, and, and meeting sort of resellers yeah. and, and everything that we haven't been doing for literally eight months, really. So you haven't done any trainings at the moment uh, for the last year? Only local ones. Oh, yeah. We've done local ones in okay. Queensland. We've done local ones or we, we're doing local ones in sort of Sydney, but you can only do, you know, so much within a, a certain city, if you know yeah. what I mean. Um, so, yeah, we can't bring people together for, you know, a national meeting or a national conference. Um, you know, we've done some Zoom like this, but okay. again, you know, it's good. And especially, you know, we're talking to you in Europe and being in live from sunny Sydney. Um, but yeah, it's still quite not the same as getting together and hands on and discussing products and the talk that you get after the conference or the meeting or, you know, all, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Do you do a lot with, uh, with email marketing and has that changed anything to your business, uh, reaching the customer? on a different level, because as you said, you do a lot of events, you do a lot of trainings, you get people in to show them the product. So we have to find alternatives to, to show people products. Uh, have, have you changed anything um, or did you have to change anything uh, with that respect, like creating videos, creating new content? I, for, for one, I created a, a sort of academy based on what Gion is doing as well with the nice detailing guru videos. Uh, we try to do what we usually do on the events, but do it in a more, um, uh, how do I say, uh, a more digital manner, um, trying to, to create a knowledge base, trying to create the videos, trying to create nice pictures and manuals, uh, showing people how it's done, how we would usually do it in the shop, but now in a digital way. Is that something you have uh, touched or is it something you would recommend? And have you got, if you did it, did you have good feedback on that? Yeah, I think we're, we're doing more and more, really, um, or we're certainly stepping up. Yeah, we've got a, a, um, uh, a new lady started in the sort of the, the digital marketing sort of realm that's been with us probably about three months now. So we've, we've sort of cleaned up what we, we were doing, reformatted a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, it was something that I recognized, um, I guess, sort of before all this happens um, and was looking for someone anyway. And then it really hit and it's just like, yeah, okay, well, we really need to do change the sort of the platforms that we use and how we, how we do communicate. So it's even more important now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we are starting to do more and trying to reach customers in different sort of ways to, um, you know, to, to educate them through social um, platforms, through, um, I guess, a, a lot of different sort of methods of videos and, and things like that. And yeah, e, um, you know, e-marketing and stuff like that through newsletters and things as well. Yeah. Um, and trying to, to sort of communicate. I think yeah. the world has definitely gone that way. So the timing and the frequency is then quite important because, you, you, I mean, on any given day, you know, you'll be getting in like 20, 30 emails from people that you might have bought from something or spoken to something or whatever else. So you've also got to judge the, the interaction and the frequency sort of rates quite well without sort of pestering people. Yes, as it were. <laughs> exactly. We don't, we don't want to spam people either. So, mm. um, yeah. Have you seen an impact on your sales? Is it because for me, for example, at the beginning of the year, we were swamped with sales. Everybody couldn't get their products fast enough with their real lockdown. It was actually for our sector being a hobby uh, enthusiast sector, 
uh, to one for one part. Um, they all got to detailing their car. They had some stuff lying around for like a couple of years, and now they finally had the time to basically get into detailing their car properly. Um, did you see an effect on sales? Uh, for me, it was it was spiking at the beginning of the year, and then it got back to a n more normal level. But we were missing the walk-in shops, the walk-in customers. So, uh, is that something yeah. you noticed as well? Did you take advantage of it? Uh, uh, and yeah, because we, there are opportunities to be had. What was the last point, sorry, about? What there are opportunities to be had, even in a in a situation as we find ourselves in. Yeah, um, we've had a roller coaster of a year, really. Um, I mean, Dario sort of came on in what February, March, or something yeah. like that. Um, we really got hit here, um, and it got serious at the end of March. Um, so no one really believed what was sort of going on, and then the government acted real quickly. So within about ten to twelve days, we were all open to all closed. Yeah. Um, by the end of March, that was it. Um, you know, everywhere was sort of locked down. Uh, same uh, for us. And, and fairly heavily locked down, yeah. fairly quickly. Um, so that seemed to scare the bejesus out of everyone. So, like you say. Um, retail got closed, hospitality got closed, everything got closed. So all of our walk-in stores, and we, we got four sort of walk-in stores in the major city, um, they, they just got closed and that was it. Um, no one really knew how to do it. So by the end of March, yeah, it was, it was sort of decreasing, if you know what I mean. Um, so February 1st is usually quite quiet, quiet after the Christmas sort of lull um, and people going away on their summer holidays. <laughs> Um, and then um, March was starting to pick up. By the end of March, it literally died. Okay. Um, people just got locked in and it was just like, whoa, what, what's going to happen here? So for about two weeks, it was very, very sort of quiet on the radar. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was just like, okay, well, if this is how the new norm is, people then started, like you said, oh, okay, well, I've got time to, um, you know, redo my car, decorate my house, whatever it is right, let's just start ordering stuff in. So our online sales then went completely the other way. We all know what happened with the, sort of the factory as well. They get absolutely swamped with orders from yeah. everyone else. So we went from complete nothing to complete everything to completely out of stock. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, exactly. All within, all within about two to three months. Uh, so and yeah, it was, it was very, very sort of dramatic. And then like you said, we seem to have found quite a sort of a happy medium. Uh, th um, that brought a lot of logistic sort of uh, uh, issues with it as well. Victoria, yeah. so one of our main sort of states, in August, and they got locked back down again for two months. And again, the same thing sort of happened. We saw the first couple of weeks where they got re-locked down, absolutely deathly quiet for Victoria, and then all of a sudden picked straight back up, and you know it's it's a couple of hundred percent of what it was before. So it is like this kind of this, this, this sort of tick sort of shape where everyone just goes, whoa, and there's nothing. And then all of a sudden, oh, okay, I've got time now. Right, let's go. Um, when they settle into to whatever it is. Um, so yeah, we've had the shops closed. We've had the shops open. Um, we've had the huge demands and then the huge sort of troughs in sort of online. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's been a fair, fair wild ride. Yeah, that brings me neatly into the logistics side of it because as you mentioned, if you don't get the products in, you can't help people to do what they want to do. So the logistics yep. side of it is, is, is very important. Getting the products to their shops uh, and, and being able to sell the product, not only from, uh, from our point of view, getting it to the customer, but getting the products in. And that has been quite a challenge as well, if I say so. So, um, yeah, the, and I think um, uh, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but uh, Gion did a very good job with that. They, they really were able to, to keep uh, production going. Uh, the only hassle for us was basically how to get the products from the factory into the country and onto the dealers. That's something I've struggled with uh, on, on both sides, getting the products to me and then getting the products uh, safely and, fa and fast to my uh, network of resellers. Is this something you struggled with as well? Or oh, completely. Um, and still struggling with, to tell you the truth, there's still a lot of aftershocks of it. Um, you know, we, we had those um, slight delays with the first sort of orders where obviously every um, distributor around the world was, um, you know, placing orders and large orders on the sort of the factory. So they, they did sort of slow down a bit, but I think they did pretty well indeed. Um, then 
as an afterflow onto that. And I think it happened in, in a lot of different industries. Um, the, uh, the the shipping lines started cancelling shipping. So yeah, um, then containers got hard to get hold of. Um, then our Australian ports and the unions decided it's a great time to strike because they got everyone over a barrel. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically we're paying around about twice the amount we were for a container this time last year. It's taking longer, probably an extra week to two weeks. Um, and on the outbound of it, and I think the biggest thing when it first kicked off in April or May was, like you say, the internal delivery structure in Australia also melted down. Yeah, so I had the same issues. And carriers, yeah, completely melted down because- <laughs> What's up, Doug? How is it in bum mate? <laughs> yeah, all good. I need this guy. We have yeah, to shut have down. To. I have to use him we, for we some. We have to get for an, to another tech for talk, some so. testing. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Dario. Hello. Mike, it was very nice talking to you. Very thank you very much for the insights, and uh, hope to see you again soon. We'll talk soon as well. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks good, indeed. Good day, good day, Perfect. <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you got something out of it and it helps you with the sales in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Go. So, we are in hospital with our back. Hello, today we're going to talk about the ever-present question, to wax or to coat your car? Rich, are you a coating guy or a wax guy? Oh, but now that's the million dollar question. Um, honestly, it depends on so many factors. For me, lately, I've been a wax guy. Um, but in the past, at times, I've certainly been a coatings guy. So I kind of wax and wane uh, for the pun, um, depending on many things. What about you? Well, my car is coated, mm -hmm. but it's a daily driver. So in my opinion, it all depends on the usage of the car mm -hmm. and the, the person at hand. Do you have the time? Do you enjoy it? Or do you mostly look for the benefits mm -hmm. of an easy to clean car and want to spend as less time as possible just maintaining it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the wax is something that should be enjoyable. Uh, it should be something that you want to do mm -hmm. uh, because you'll have to do it more often uh, depending on the usage of uh, the car. And so do you prefer waxing? If you were given the choice between the two, and the all other factors gone? Yeah, application-wise, I would, of course, uh, prefer a wax. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to do it every couple of months. Yeah. So uh, in that respect, uh, my car now has had a coating on it for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And every time I wash it, it looks like a freshly waxed car when I'm washing it. Of course, uh, it's, it's not pristine condition, but it's easy to maintain. And this is for me the main benefit from having a coating. Yeah. Something that is super easy to maintain, doesn't take a lot of time to wash, and gives me that okay look every single time. Yeah. Are we talking about uh, a freshly waxed car? No, this is reserved, in my opinion, for cars that are uh, cared for, on a more higher le or a higher level at least. Yeah. I'm going to disagree slightly on that okay. point. I agree certainly for like garage queens, beautiful old cars that you want to keep absolutely 100%. Mm -hmm. Why coat them? You know, it's, the, the wax is perfect. I think for me, where waxing in the last few years has become really important for me is, um, you know, changing circumstances with work and at home. I've lost the ability to easily work indoors anymore. So for me, the coating option kind of either it becomes really difficult for me to try and find an indoor workspace yeah. or then I have to think wax and so for me then I research the wax market and look at what can give me the most durability but something that I can still put on on my driveway if I have to so kind of for me there there is definitely an element of where wax comes back into the equation if we if we're in a situation where all of a sudden the lovely indoor workspace disappears and we we, we have to end up working I'm on the pretty driveway. spoiled in that regard so. yeah definitely well I have been I mean yeah. I, honestly years ago you know when we uh, were first introduced to Gion, I mean, we've both been in the game for as long as I can remember now, yeah. you know, years and years. And, uh, you know, when Gion first came out, that was my first 
when a time I fell in love with coatings because they were lovely to use but the performance was there as well and don't get me wrong I mean yeah the ease of maintenance once you've put in the investment of the time and effort fantastic but you still need that space at the start to do a, a proper job um, and that's something that do you do you struggle in your role as reseller distributor when you get enthusiasts coming to you and they're very keen on the coatings route and how do you then run through that process with them and how do you cover off this issue of do you have a suitable workspace? Yeah. You know? so that's where it all starts. Yep. Uh, everybody wants a coating because this is what they've been told is the best in the business, mm -hmm. but there is no best in yep. the business. It's whatever suits your specific needs mm -hmm. and your environment you're able to apply it in. Don't try and apply a coating in the winter time on your driveway. This would yep. be the worst idea possible. Um, so find a, a good space to do it indoors, then by all means uh, consider a coating. Are you somebody that is uh, keen on working on their car and is willing, and it's your hobby, and is willing to spend a lot of time on it every couple of weeks, why would you put on a coating? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're going to be rubbing it off or polishing it off again uh, soon after that, so then I would consider more of a wax. Yeah. Uh, if you are somebody like me that's very busy, I love, I love to have a shiny car and when I wash it, I want it to be easy to wash and I want the results to be fantastic afterwards. I will coat my car and I will spend a lot of time yep. maintaining it and, and, and quick detailing it. The Gion uh, quick detailer is fantastic in that regard. It just gives you that top finish, but it doesn't necessitate me spending hours and hours, and hours. hours every couple of weeks, months yep. on that daily driver. Again, if I would have a, a garage queen, it's a totally different story. Different story. Then yeah. that time that I want to spend uh, working on it is, uh, is for the love of the car and the love of detailing. Yeah. So uh, there's a difference there. And yeah. it's, and I think, important to identify your customer when he walks in, which type of user is he? Is he looking for um, the, the maintenance benefits and the durability? Or is he looking to enjoy himself yep. uh, and spend the time working on his car. This is for me where it's exciting now that we have the, the new Geon yep. Wax. You know, for me in the last few years, the difficulty I've had as a, a reseller when trying to go through that whole myriad of questions with people that are interested in coatings, it's, it's, you, you do come across a certain percentage where they just say to you, I just do not have the right workspace, but I do want the benefits of uh, a really slick finish, a really durable finish and easy to maintain finish. Um, I really, really want to either use can coat or maybe want to even go higher up in the, in the Gion range, maybe pure. Um, and they're just, to start with, dead set, I must have a coating. But then it's like, where are you going to apply it? The driveway. No, you can't. Yeah. It's been very difficult you know, for me as a reseller and, and then as a distributor now to get those questions because you, know, you want people to be Gion fans, you want them to be excited and to get the benefits. And until now, it's been a very tricky question to, to, to answer to them. And this is what now excites me. I mean, I'll be the first to admit, you know, in the last few years, I've turned into a wax guy um, and I had to research the market. It's been a few years since I'd used wax and, and you know, I ended up picking one that's been very popular and very durable um, and it's worked well for that situation and I'm just really, really, really happy now that we have uh, an equivalently great product in our range to be able to offer to our Geon fans. But this is also different in that respect that it offers, next to the awesome shine and ease of application, amazing durability. Yep. Because that is also something we need to ask our customer. What is yep. your expectancy? Uh, of durab and durability. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking for something um, to apply every year, it's going to be difficult to, to find a wax uh, if you're using your, your car on a daily basis. Yeah. But this really tends to, to go very far already. Yeah. So it's getting easier uh, to pick the wax uh, compared to the other products we have, certainly now that we have this one. Yeah, I think so as well. I think that for me is the very, very few waxes ever deliver on the promise of decent durability. You yep. know, we, we have waxes that look phenomenal, but within two months, three months, they're done and, and fair enough. I think the waxes that truly go beyond the six month mark, you know, seven, eight, nine months with, with good maintenance are the, the truly special ones for, for people that want that best of both worlds approach. And I think for me, that's now, for me, brilliant. So exactly. happy with it, so happy with it. And then in my opinion, there's one more discussion to be had. Uh, how about scratch resistancy? There's positives and negatives about it. Um, so what we see is sometimes uh, there's going to be a small scratch on the car mm -hmm. where the coating, the, the fix to that is already quite um, 
intense. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that you have to at least work on a whole panel yep. to get the perfect finish again. To actually without, correct it. Exactly, yeah. to yeah. correct it. Yeah. It's much easier with a wax. Yep. So it has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, with a wax, you can easily touch up that little area, yep. uh, add some new wax, and you're never going to see uh, the, the repair, or if I can yep. call it a repair. Uh, with a coating, it's not that easy. Yep. So if you're not, again, the one to, to uh, or if you are looking to correct every minor issue on the car on a constant basis, maybe look more into a wax rather than a coating. If, you're, uh, if you put the coating on, don't stress out uh, over every minute mark that's on the car and enjoy the long longevity of the, the product that's on yeah. the car. I think I would just pick up to clarify one point there for enthusiasts because sometimes it's very easy for enthusiasts to hear scratch resistance and think of it one way when we can actually look at it another way. And that's that when they think, oh, should I pick this because it's more scratch resistant? Or should I pick the wax because it's more scratch resistant? I think the key thing I would always reinforce is that when it comes to your routine washing, you should, if you use good techniques, good methods, follow the Gion way, be able to wash your car with either system without inflicting marring. You know, we've been in the game 15 yeah. years plus now. And I sure as hell know that I can wash cars treated with either system for six months a year and look at them at the end of the year and they have very minimal marring. Exactly. Uh, so I don't think that should come into the, the equation too much um, for, for enthusiasts in terms of their actual yeah. choice. Okay. Cool. Any other things you would like to discuss regarding the wax? Not really. I think no. we should just finish up. Now that we have the G on wax, one answer from both of us. Are you now a wax guy or are you a coating guy? Both. Me too. Both. <laughs> uh, I like them both. Exactly. Like I said, my yep. daily driver is always going to be coded. Yep. If I am happy or lucky enough to finally buy my toy car yep. for the weekends, it's going to get the wax. Yep. So. Same. Exactly. That's how I'd finish that one up as well. Exactly. One more point. You can also use the wax as a maintenance product. I know you're a fan of that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, the beauty when you adopt a wax into your routine is that whether you have anything underneath it or whether it's applied straight to the paint, you know, you can go a certain number of months down the road and yes, the cars are going to get contaminated in that period and, 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 you know, not into an ideal state. But if you don't want to go through a whole decon process with a wax, the great thing is you can just layer the next coat of wax over it to top the protection up if you want to. You do not have to worry necessarily every single time about perfection, but come the end of the year, when I want to get my car back to perfect again, a simple full decon procedure, tar remover, iron remover, possibly a clay if needed, wax is 100% stripped. I haven't locked in any contaminants during that yearly period permanently, and I can then just start over again. So kind of for me, yeah, there is a, a simplicity to the wax and it just means I can't get myself in trouble. You yeah. know, it's, it's easy to fully remove as and when the time comes and just starts over, so. And what would you say the benefits to that are compared to our current lineup of products? Or the wet coat, the Bave Plus, the Cure, yeah. and certainly yeah. now the new ceramic detailer? Pleasure, I think, you know, it, I think Waxing has been with us forever. You know, if you're a car guy and you've been into detailing forever, you know, waxing is probably where you started out. And, and the very concept of rubbing something lovingly onto your car, it, it's, uh, it's a procedure that it, it ignites that passion in you. And it's yeah. something that you can take great <laughs> pleasure from and enjoy. It's therapeutic. Many people say it's a great way to relax after a busy week at work. You know, my car doesn't need to be waxed. Yeah. That's I just I want to go started. wax my car. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so. We all got started with waxing cars. There was nothing. Yeah, you know. That was what you did. And let's face it, you know, it's one of those experiences. It's tactile. You yeah. know, you're, you're, you're touching well. your vehicle, the smell, yeah. um, and then you get the look at the end. So it, it's always an experience. Whereas I find for me, coatings, it's much more functional. You know, I, I wouldn't ever profess to say I enjoy applying coatings on my car, but waxing a car, yeah, I do that every day, any day. It, it's good fun for me. So. In, into that routine of me waxing on a regular basis, yeah, that just fits in with the whole idea of enjoying detailing. You know, I think these days a lot of enthusiasts get hung up on what's the absolute best and they're looking at all kinds of performance indicators, yeah. but they're losing touch with the fact that sometimes we just want to go and enjoy it's, yeah. some time it's fun. on the car. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, fun. exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it's, um, yeah, for me, it, it's always going to have a, a role in the lineup. So if we say, coating or wax, it could be not only both in a separate uh, instance, it could mm -hmm. be both where applying the coating as a base coat and uh, for longevity, 
and then maintaining yeah. it with wax to just get that ultimate finish yeah. and that ultimate enjoyment out of it, maintaining it. That's a really, really good point, actually, and uh, you know something that we didn't uh, address in the original video, but that, that's a great point because you know in, in the whole routine that I've just mentioned here that I like to work with the idea that you can wax at the start of the year, wax in the middle of the year, and strip it all off and start again. Well, the beauty then is if you have a coating underneath that that you're only worried about reapplying every two or three years you know maybe you're going to correct your paint and fully strip everything on that kind of time scale yep. in the intervening period if you've if you've laid a coating yep. down first you have the benefits of everything you know yep. you have that bomb proof base layer there um, and you know you can still wax on top of that and you can still follow my maintenance procedure you know the contaminants will build up you can wax again but then you hit it with a, a decon wash a tire remover iron remover and clay bar and then the wax is done, yeah. the contaminants are done, but that coating, still there, completely yeah. happy. So, so even um, if you don't have the time, you don't have to worry. Exactly. Like with the classic yeah. Yeah. Uh, waxing that you really have to do on a regular basis, otherwise you're gonna lose your protection. Yeah. Here, if you coat your car first, you don't have to worry about that. It will always be easy to maintain, even exactly. if you, at that specific point, don't have the time exactly to no pressure you know and, yeah. and maybe one of the ways of looking at this now again is you know some people will say okay when i i buy my next car and it's going to be a really nice car it's a step up for me and this is really important to get right from the start ah uh, it's going to be a daily driver i need a coating so yeah. actually do you know what coating i maybe don't have quite the right garage or, yeah. or workspace so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to a certified detail i'm going to get my coating put on but you know what I don't want to lose my passion for yep. caring for my car myself in the in the years and month, months and years to come after that. So for me at that stage, just like, well, just hop onto wax. You know, six months after, a year after you've had your certified coating, you know, you can do a decon wash, start waxing, you know, yes. and, and just wax whenever you feel like it. The, the beauty is there. If, you, if you're lucky enough to suddenly have a, you know, some time off work or, or some downtime, you know, a lockdown, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you can yeah. grab that tin of wax and you can go and enjoy yourself to the heart's content. The opposite side of that coin is, you know, if work gets on top of you um, and, and, you know, you've got the crushing life pressures of daily life and, and it just becomes too much, it's one less pressure because you can think, oh, my car's really well protected. And it doesn't matter if I don't get to wax it for the next two months, three months, four months. It's 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 fine, you know. Yep. It, it just, just it's, it becomes a nice way of maintaining rather than a stressful way of maintaining. That's awesome advice, Rich. <laughs> and I think we can then conclude: wax is certainly not dead. <laughs> yeah, they said it, but it's yeah. not true. No, it is not dead, not for sure. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot from this discussion, and uh, um, yeah, enjoy uh, using either of our products. At home. Where's my coffee? Coffee! He's getting a massage. Yeah. Oh! Hi! Hi! Hi guys, welcome to Gion Show. Um, I'm gonna do a video call with our Gion guy in Singapore and see how he's doing in, in COVID times. Kenneth! Hi, Yves. How, How are, are you? you? All good? All good here in Singapore. Long, Safe and good. Long time no see. It's already been uh, one year since we, we saw each other in SEMA. Yes. Yes, it has been a year. And I think I miss you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we as well. But we should, we should catch up later because how long? It's, it's been how long since I was in Singapore? It's already uh, three, Good three, question. I think three it's years? two years. Yeah. So or, we, we, or should, we should for sure catch up in 2021 if everything goes right. Yes, we have to. We have to catch up. Yeah. So how, how is family? Good? Everything is all good. Uh, in Singapore, I think, I think we are pretty safe. So everything uh, goes pretty well here. Nothing but, good yeah. me nothing but good memories for me personally. So just a question and, and to give some um, insights in, 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 in your detailing business, Gion wise, how has COVID affected or how did you, how did you change or interact with, with the situation? Um, okay, to be honest, it has been a very interesting year. It's, it's confusing and it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. And, at the beginning of COVID, we were lost. Yeah, yeah, very lost. We're not too sure what's happening. Yeah, but I think after some time, we managed to, 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 you know, find our ways to, to, to restart our life again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
And, you know, after six months or eight months into COVID, uh, in Singapore, it feels like it's back to normal again. Mm-hmm. With, with a little bit of restrictions, uh, you know, things like no nightlife, uh, uh, over 10.30 p.m. That's, that's all. But other than that, it's, it's all good over here. Mm-hmm. Mm. So um, do you have, since COVID, like, for example, more questions in, like, uh, interior-wise doing details? Or uh, because of, like, now with the, we, we, we made this interior detailer, is, is, it, is it more been asked to do more interiors than, or, or let's say, um, f- more focused on, inter- on interiors? Yes, yes, a little bit more. Um, I mean, pre- people are a little bit more concerned about um, things like, oh, you know, if I drive my car to you, mm-hmm. how are you going to take over? How are you going to make sure my interior is clean? Mm-hmm. All these things. People are more more conscious about all these things. Yeah. Because, you know, when, when we get in the car personally and, and drive it, yeah. uh, there might be some contaminants, exactly. uh, like, like by, virus by the, content. By the way, did, did you receive already the interior detailer? Uh, no, no, Not are, it's on the way. Ah, okay, good, good. Uh, also restrictions regarding COVID, longer uh, shipping times. So sorry, but uh, I, think you will, I think you will like it, yeah. Um, in, in regards of, um, because I don't know if for, for the people watching, um, Singapore and mobile detailing is a completely different uh, story than in other parts of the world. In Singapore, mobile detailing is very different or almost non-existent? Um, we, we, we actually have mobile detailing. Yeah. Uh, quite a bit, quite a bit in Singapore because people are looking for that sort of service. When, when I say that, because everyone has got a very busy lifestyle in Singapore, mm-hmm. you know, so uh, actually there's a big demand in Singapore for mobile detailing. Well, well you know, they, they work Monday to Friday mm-hmm. uh, with busy schedules, you know, and, and after that, uh, they would like to have services just by call, calling the mobile detailers Come to the, uh, did you uh, did you uh, see did you see a change in in mobile mobile growing in Singapore w- within COVID now or more demand or? I think I think currently there's more demand because people are working from home. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mobile detailers is like a phone call with Hey, can you get my car detailed? And they will come over. Okay. Instead of going out. Instead yeah. of going out. Okay. Very interesting. And um, yes. how is the, the, the market for the DIY guys? Because we, we have also a lot of guys watching um, that are detailing their cars or like to detail their cars themselves. Is, is, is this market changed or did you anticipate different on that? Uh, okay, to be honest, it's very interesting. During this COVID, uh, I think a lot of people has become uh, a professional detailer. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it is. I think I think they have been wanting to clean up their cars. They have been wanting to to do DIY, uh, for example, polishing and stuff. Yeah. So during this period, they started buying buying products from us, and after using it, they love it. Okay. Suddenly, they feel like they are a pro- okay. professional. That's that's good. That's good. That's good to hear. That's the positive side. So. Um, yes. 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 I hope uh, that we can meet for sure in 2021 and um, that um, yeah, we can have um, real live talks um, and, and uh, do some interesting things and discuss some interesting things. Oh, yes, yes. Um, I would say stay, s- stay safe and um, I hope to, to see you really soon, okay? Yeah. And, uh, you keep, too as well. And keep doing it the Gion way. Definitely. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for watching and uh, tune in for more uh, worldwide uh, distributor talk. Ciao.